Part 2 The Trinity Let's enter a little bit into the mystery of the Trinity of God. What is this first being, which has no beginning, did, or rather, does, since it is a present eternity? It's a present that contains all the time. It is not a past, a present, a future, it would imply a limit. God has no limits. So what does he do in his eternity? What is his life? He cannot deal with something that is external to him, he exists only him. Only him is eternal. And that's what the Revelation says. It is that this first being possesses, this first being which is unique, but that is important to say, the Christian religion is indeed monotheistic. Muslims often say, but no, you are polytheists since you ask the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. No no. It is understandable very well. It's really a monotheistic religion with one God. This God, this unique person, who is God, has an inner life. What can this prime being do? We demonstrated before philosophy came to discover that he is a person. Obligatory. He is his intelligence, since he has no limit, he cannot ask distinctions like that, and he has a will, which is the characteristic of all minds. Well, the only thing God can do in his eternity are activities of his mind. There is only one object that he can contemplate in his eternity, only one thing. It's himself. So from philosophy we feel the coherence of this revelation that says that, and it is Saint John who says it in his Gospel at the very beginning, in the beginning was the word. The verb is a Latin word which means knowledge. Concretely, in his eternity God does only one thing, he contemplates himself. So right away we could raise the objection that it is a deeply selfish act. It would be a deeply selfish act if we who are limited do it. For a being without limit, it is a burst of light, of life. It is perfectly generous and the proof of this generosity is that it will give the creation. Everything comes from that. He contemplates himself and it will give the creation one day, there is no other primary cause than himself. When we contemplate ourselves, when we close our eyes, for example, we find that we are not even able to accurately remember the shape of our own face. It is not precise. We remember better the shape of others' faces because we see them more often in front of us. In the same way we do not know each other well. The knowledge we have of ourselves, if we look at ourselves, is limited. Our verb, our knowledge of ourselves is not exactly like ourselves. But God, the absolutely perfect being, limitless, infinite, when he contemplates himself, he knows absolutely perfectly. It circles in an instant, which is eternity, its mystery. So God, let's call him who is first, Yahweh, I am, spend his eternity contemplating his own beauty. This own contemplation is called the verb. In other words, the concept he has of you I himself. God, whom we will call, to address the children since it is necessary that they understand, the Father, by knowing himself gives a son, exactly like himself. We have therefore the Father who is God and the Son who is simply the knowledge that God has of himself. Do we have two gods? Two infinities, face to face? No. It's one God. His knowledge in himself. They are exactly alike since he knows himself perfectly. So it is said that the Son proceeds from the Father and the Son is like the Father, consubstantial with the Father. They form only one God. 
this, the first person of the Trinity. Now, any spirit, be it the human spirit, or the spirit of God, does not possess only the intelligence, that faculty of knowing. He also possesses another faculty, the faculty of loving, which is called when applied to man, it is called the will. Why because loving is not a feeling. Sentimental love is a love of the sensitive part that we share with animals. It's easy enough to understand. If I feel a feeling for a girl and I go with her, it's easy. In a pinch, the animals are capable of such operations. Because we are carried by pleasure, and they too. But if this companion has an accident, that I feel no feelings for her any more, because I cannot, she does not attract me more, she is disfigured, and that I continue, I remain faithful, I the see faithfully beyond the pleasure that I feel, because it is she, because my intelligence tells me that I cannot abandon it. I swore him. Well, that's love, and then I think about her and not the pleasure I feel. It is a love of intelligence that wants to remain faithful, it is the will. And God is the same, God who is a pure spirit, not only is he intelligent and also he is will. Well, very simply, when Yahweh knows himself, he produces the word, the knowledge of himself, exactly like himself, and the Father and the Son, exactly alike, magnificent, without any limit, can only love each other.